Welcome back to Excel HQ, everyone. Today we will be covering the net present value formulas, NPV, XNPV, IRR, XIRR, and MIRR for our second video in the finance series. Now let's get right into it. First, we have an example of six cash flows, one cash outflow, and then five cash inflows coming in in other periods. If we want to calculate the net present value of our investment, we can do equals NPV, and then we'll find our discount rate. The rates vary depending on how much you need to earn based off of what equity return you need, what debt return you need. Right now, we're just going to put 0.1. If you don't make more than 0.1% back, it's not going to be a worthwhile project. There's probably going to be better projects in the future. So for our values, you can put them all in separately, or you can just highlight all of your cash inflows. And I say inflows carefully because you don't want to outline your cash outflow here because it's going to assume this is period one. It's going to discount this back. You don't want that. So I'm going to close off my MPV here, and then I'm just going to add in after that formula what my cash outflow was. So I'm going to receive $463, which is correct. The same way of doing NPV is kind of like just present value as well. So over my time period here, say I had 1.1 as my discount rate. If I put that to the power actually of these and I got my discount rate back for these five years, that's the same as me taking my cash inflows and dividing them by my discount rate. So I'd actually end up with the exact same way if I did it like that. You know, I summed these up here. And then I would receive the $10,000. And obviously the 10,000 here minus this 10,000 would give me the 463. And this is just so you could visualize it a little bit better, maybe understand it a little bit better as well. So now for our X NPV, say that our cash flows aren't all at equal intervals. So right now it's assuming these are all at equal intervals and it's all by year. Now I have it by a month and I have it by one month and then it skips a month a year and then two months later we get our $3,000 back. What does this do to our net present value? So we'll type in equals NPV and this time you want to include your negative investment because you're giving them the dates and that changes things. So I'm going to put 0.1 is still my discount rate. This time my values are going to include the negative out cash outflow and all the inflows and I'm going to include the dates. This is going to give us an NPV much higher than this one because it's at the same discount rate. And we're getting our money back relatively a lot sooner than I assumed with the annual rate in our other formula. So I'll close off this bracket and I'll receive an NPV of $3,634, which is very good. Basically, what it's doing is instead of for this time period here, as we did our discount rate of equals 1.1 to the power of 1, what it's actually doing now is it's doing to the power of 1 divided by 12 because it's monthly here instead of annually. So our discount rate becomes a lot different, and that makes the amount we get back a lot different as well. Now to move on to our IRR, which is our internal rate of return. When this NPV equals 0, what's this discount rate at basically is what the IRR finds. So what's our break-even point, if you will? So I'll type in equals IRR. We'll put in our values. We still include all our values for IRR. And then we provide a guess because a lot of the time it is just trial and error. You can't solve it algebraically just because of where the rate is in the formula. It's just basically impossible. The default guess is 10, so we don't really need to provide a guess. So I'm just going to close off my bracket. Our internal rate of return is going to be 12%. This means in my NPV formula, if I actually change this to 12%, what would I get? I'd get negative 78. Let me guess, I have some percentage points here. Okay, see it's actually 11.7 when you open up those percentage points. So if I go 11.7, there we go. Now I'll get basically $0. I'm sure there's some more percentage points there. Yep. So if you actually put it, if I just subbed in this to my formula, you would end up with zero MPV overall, which actually I'll do right now. Just to show you, see, there we go. MPV zero, IRR is very straightforward. It's just if your internal rate of return is basically any higher than this, you're not, it's not gonna be a profitable investment. Don't do it. If this was 11.71, this would be in the negative. If it was 11.69, it would be in the positive. Now for our XIRR, 
very similar to the XMPV. This time you're just including the dates. This, this IRR still assumes that they're all evenly spaced at annual periods. So now I include my XIRR, my values again, and then the corresponding dates to these values. And then I could provide a guess again, once again, I don't really feel it's necessary in this case. And it's gonna give me an XIRR of 253%, which is a very good IRR. However, once again, you know, if I give out $10,000 and the next month I'm bringing in 2,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, it's a pretty good investment if you ask me. And it just takes into consideration how quick that is. So actually in our XMPV formula, which also assumes the dates, if I take out our discount right here and put in XIRR, it's going to give me zero. What if my XIRR was 255%? Now my answer is negative. What if my IRR was 250%? Now my MPV is positive. So once again, I'm taking that project. But what we're seeing here is just that 253% is the break even investment rate. So obviously we're gonna accept it because we don't need to make more than 253% on this investment, I'm assuming. And now for the last IRR function, the MIRR function, we will type in equals MIRR. This stands for the modified internal rate of return. And the only difference is, is that you get to pick your finance rate and your investment rate. Usually in the IRR function, you put in one rate and that applies to both. However, this is really helpful when you have multiple cash outflows. So for right now, I'll include all of my values still. And then this rate, my point one, would only apply to my outflows, my negative 10,000, except my negative 10,000 is at cash flow period zero. So it wouldn't actually apply and then my reinvestment rate, this time I'll put it as 0.12. And then I'll close off my bracket and then I'll get 11.82 MIRR. See now if I change my first cash flow here to negative 2000, then my MIRR would be 3.914. And this really does create a difference because now all these cash flows are discounted back at 12%. And this secondary outflow is only discounted back at 1% because not all of the time should the rate be the same for your reinvestment versus your finance rate. And that is how you use all the IRR functions and the MPV functions in Excel. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, leave a like and comment down below anything else you would like to see in the future.